I would like to give a special shout out to all my patrons who have supported my hobby and passion even more. Thank you so much for everything. Hi everyone, in today's conversation, uh, today's conversation is not with an author, but we have someone special here. Uh, today, today's conversation is with Lauren Panepinto. This is uh, Orbit Creative Director and also an SFF co uh, cover art designer. So Lauren, can you please introduce yourself first? Sure. Well, you did a good job. Um, my name is Lauren Panepinto. Uh, I'm the creative director of Orbit Books in the U.S. Um, and I have been so for almost 14 years now, so a long time. Uh, I worked at Doubleday Books before that, and I worked at St. Martin's Press before that. So I've been in book covers for about 20 years. Um, so a lot of book cover, a lot of book cover experience. Um, but so that means uh, as far as Orbit goes, a creative director is not just in charge of the covers, but also logos, branding, just making sure everything looks not just like a good cover, but a good Orbit cover. And um, since Orbit US and Orbit UK um, are, are very uh, close, we kind of co-publish a lot of things. Some things go, go to Galangs, we can talk about that later, but um, mm -hmm. We're kind of, it feels like, even though we're separate companies, like it feels like half my team is in the UK half the time and we're sharing covers with them and things like that. So, uh, but yeah, that's that's what I do. <laughs> uh, hold on. So does this mean that you actually choose every cover artist in yeah. for maybe every Orbit books? Well, you know, I think what's so interesting about being able to have these conversations with fans directly mm. um, is that people don't know kind of what the cover process is. Mm -hmm. So no one really gets to choose alone. Um, so I kind of offer, you know, a, the process kind of runs roughly, this is very abbreviated, but runs, mm -hmm. the editors are buying books and then mm -hmm. there's kind of roughly scheduling them where what season they want them to be in. And then at the beginning of the season, all the editors and, and me and my team, um, which has art directors and designers in it, we all sit in a room or virtually in a room together and mm. talk about each book that's going to be in that season. Sometimes we don't have the title yet. Sometimes we don't know, you know, there's so much we don't know. Some things we have full manuscripts for, some things we don't. But we talk about what, you know, the whole season is going to be. And some things are very easy because if a series is already set, we always try to keep the same artist and the same look for that, that series. So those are kind of off the top. And then there's a lot of like hard covers turning into paperbacks. And a lot of times, every once in a while, we, we change the cover art for reasons, but, you know, usually we keep the same cover art. So those are kind of, so then, you know, we're left with, you know, debuts, new series, things like that. And we really dig into um, what, look would be best and it, it's really tied to like what the the trends are so it's not mm -hmm. enough to say sci-fi fantasy it's not even enough to say sci-fi and fantasy but it's like okay what what's the trend in space opera are we using illustrations are we using photography like what's going on what movies are coming out what video games are coming out it's not even just books and like fantasy is the same is it epic fantasy is it politics and world building and all of this or is it uh you know kind of really one person story and we really want to depict a person on the cover to kind of denote that so you know we really get into the nitty-gritty of like what is this writing like who do we want to connect to and what are those people also into is this for video game fans is this for Dungeons and Dragons players is this for you know people who might not read a lot of sci-fi fantasy and it's more of a you know, um, half in the mainstream, half in genre kind of thing. So these are the conversations that we're having. And then I'll usually say, okay, well, it looks like this cover should be a designed cover or an illustrated cover or a photographic cover. And then I kind of go back with my team and we kind of always offer, say something's going to be an illustrate, illustrated mm. book. I think that's the easiest to, you know, that's what people kind of want to know the most. Um, <laughs> every book I'll go back and and you know it's it's part of my job and my art director's jobs to know who's working who's free who's busy who's new talent coming through who have we had our eyes on for a couple of years you know getting better um and I'll offer three or four different illustrators to the editor and the publisher in a meeting and say I think each of these people could be could do a great job at this cover and they're not three people like who's the best it's three mm. slightly different people because their art will give a slightly different feel oh. um and then the conversation is happening so the editor and the publisher and me and sometimes the marketing folks and sometimes the sale folks we're all talking about okay well people who like 
this video game will love this artist. People uh-huh. who like this book will love this artist, you know, like kind of like, do we think, you know, it's going to be about castles. Does this person have castles in their portfolio? Stuff like that. So um, we'll narrow it down to a first choice artist. And then, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes I'll have contacted that artist before just to make sure they're free, but sometimes I haven't. And then I'll reach out to them. Um, the author is also involved. The author gets to see the, the artist's portfolio and make sure they, they're into it. Um, I'm sure there's going to be questions about how much say authors have in cover. So we'll, we'll tackle that a little later. Um, the, the, the short answer for now is I, I like to have them involved a great deal. Mm. Um, so they'll be seeing the artist portfolio and then, you know, and then the process takes off from there. There's some nails back and forth. There's, you know, little by little, we get to a cover and then we're doing type on top of it. And then we kind of get to a cover and then it, you know, goes out into the world. So that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> that is um, that is amazing though. And so, does this mean that every author always have like maybe uh, maybe have a say in their cover art, or is it just maybe for for you only? Well, I when the editors are buying the books mm. at Orbit, it's a, it's also a little different house to house. Like Tor has a different answer ah, than, yeah. has yeah. than Orbit has at <clears> Orbit. <throat> um, I always like to have my authors involved early. Mm. So when the editors are, before I hear about the book, before Art hears about the book, I, the editors are talking to the author. Sometimes, and it's very different to author to author. Some authors have like entire Pinterest boards and they know artists and like they have a lot of ideas. And some artists on the opposite side of the spectrum are like, I trust you guys. I am not a visual person. I, I'll look at it when it's done. Like, I don't want to uh... know. You know, yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. it goes back and forth. And the thing I always say, like, I think sci-fi fantasy often has to have a lot more contact with authors and other kinds of books because, you know, I can't go to the encyclopedia and look stuff up. But these <laughs> authors have created this stuff out of their head. There's no other resource to go back yeah. to and say, okay, what does the sword look like? What does the outfit look like? What does the character look like? This is all in their head. There's like no other resource. And again, like, we read as much as we can, but a lot of times these books aren't done when we're doing the covers, yeah. we're doing the covers over a year in advance. So, you know, we take what we can get. <laughs> <laughs> how dif- how difficult is that though? I mean, if you don't have the time to read, but you still could sometimes create some of the best cover art and cover design. Thank you. Um, <laughs> well, I, think, I think contact with the authors really has a lot to do with that because there are times uh. um, that, you know, Again, and, and this goes, you know, further into how books are sold. If mm-hmm. you're a first time author, if it's your debut, um, you will have written the whole book to get an agent, to get it signed, to get to that stage. The whole book is done. It's going to take some editing, but like we could read it. Um, but a lot of times if you're an author that's well known, you kind of sell the book on the concept. And like, mm-hmm. I can read that concept that you sent to the editor but that's all I've got. It's, you know, a couple pages, maybe something like that, a chapter or two, you know, so we're working with that. So a lot of times I just talk to the authors, you know, when I was working on the fifth season for Nora Jemison, we didn't have a title yet. Mm. We didn't know, um, we thought it was going to be called the broken earth and that became the series title. Um, oh. so at one point I just got on the phone with Nora and I was like, can you tell me what this world is like so we can start mm-hmm. thinking about it? And, you know, and, and I was on the phone with her for two hours and she was just telling me the story of, of the books. And I don't like anything away, but like how the magic was formed, how she got the idea for it. And we were really able to kind of come up with something that made sense for that series, you know, so. So cool. That's the best part <laughs> of the job. Like I am a really collaborative person. You have to be, I think, to, to do this job, but you know, the, the, you know, like I see the stack right behind you, you have the Joe Abercrombie covers yeah, right there. That, yeah, that uh, Sam Weber did in the US. Um, I know the U- UK covers are different, but mm. for those books, um, the previous books, when we repackaged First Law, I had an artist do them uh, named Greg Ruth, who was great. Greg, in- Ruth. Greg Ruth, yeah. yeah. Greg Ruth is great. And I'm friends with Sam Weber. And he said one day, he was like, you know, I'm a big fan of Joe Abercrombie. If you ever do anything else with Joe, I would love to work on those covers. So like keep that in the back of your head for like five years, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as we had another series with Joe, I called Sam and I was like, hey, guess what? (laughs) And and it really helped because that was probably one of the 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 more collaborative ends. Joe's Joe knows his books and his audience so well and he has a lot of ideas. 
So me, the author, Bradley Engler, and um, Sam Weber and Joe just got on the phone. And we were like, okay, what can we do? What's going on? And Sam had read the whole, you know, as much of the manuscript of the first book as we had, because he's such a nerd. He's like, I get to read these early. This is great. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I mean, that's as collaborative as it can possibly be. Um, uh. And it's not really based on how big the author is or not. It's kind of about uh. how, how much... Um, sometimes how much help we need getting a grasp on it. Um, sometimes just how, uh, how informed about their own fan base and author is. Cause some authors are and some authors aren't. Some authors are really great at like, well, this book is like this book and this book and fans of this book love this book. And some authors really just want to write and, and tunnel vision and kind of, you know, they're not as involved in the industry and that, and that's fine. And we kind of adapt to, to that, but the author is a really valuable resource for us. And, you know, it's important, like I am working on 50 to 100 books at a time, you know, at any given time. Um, yeah, it's a lot. I mean, they're in different stages, but, you know, we're working on at least two seasons at a time, sometimes three. Um, and I might have 100 books on my desk, but that author, especially if they're a debut author, they've had one book on their desk for maybe five, 10 years sometimes. Yeah. That's their baby, you know, like, yeah. The the highest compliment to us is, you know, when we send a find, I mean, it's very rare that an author just gets an image and like, that's the cover. Like usually they're seeing stuff all the way through, but mm -hmm. when they get that final, this is your, your book, they're oftentimes very moved. You know, they're like, this is what my book looks like. Oh my God. Like it's the first yeah. visual yeah. representation of, of that thing. And it's really, um, it's really emotional and it's really important. And um, we've had people cry. We've had a lot of authors get little tattoos of pieces of their cover art. So like, that's the best feeling. Like when the author is happy, the fans are happy. Obviously the editor and the publisher are happy. Um, sales is happy. Everybody's happy. Then like, that's why I do my job, you know? <laughs> I, I think I speak for a lot of fantasy readers that you guys have really done such an amazing job on cover art recently, especially for debut. Because like you said, you put a lot of attention into it. For example, I think, uh, the one that really impressed uh, a lot of us the first time was uh, this one, Kings of the Wild and Bloody Oh, Rose. Kings of the Wild. Yeah, really yeah. Fun. Yeah, I think that that was the first time where I started to pay attention to Orbit Books. That, that was the first time. Uh, Richard Anderson is a terrific artist. I love Richard Anderson. Yeah. And then uh, back when uh, Evan Winter, yeah, mm -hmm. Evan, Winter, Evan Winter started releasing again his uh, Rachel Dragons oh, with mm -hmm. Carla Ortiz as the cover artist. Yeah. That was, yeah. wow. <laughs> I know. Those are the moments that like really good author artist team ups are like the best. They're yeah, so yeah. much fun. Um, yeah. Evan and Carla just like pass notes so much, you know, about we're working on uh, the next cover now. And there's just like back and <laughs> forth and like references. And I just like get to watch the emails go by. Like, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, when you have people that just really know the material and the, the, just the world of what's going on in sci-fi fantasy, what people are into, you know, like my my best jobs are when I just connect the right people and I like mostly stay out of the way. And then I just have to worry about putting type on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> but that is the that is still a very important thing in my opinion, as, because a lot of people doesn't doesn't talk about typography, right? But typography do pay do pay a lot of role in influencing our our visual <laughs> oh yeah no of course yeah. i mean you mentioned you know justice of kings and yes, um yes. martina fachova had done a, a, a gorgeous perfect mm, illustration mm. for this but whether the type was oh we knew pretty early on that we were going to go big with the type um ah. so we were playing kind of playing tennis back and forth so mm. she was sending me thumbnails and i was putting type on top of it in different arrangements so she knew kind of how big he needed to be to fit in between the types. So it's kind of like a game of tennis back and forth, but mm. sometimes we don't know. And we might've tried to stack it underneath or like put, you know, the author name on top and the, the title on uh -huh. the bottom, but we kind of knew early on that this was going to be that way. Um, I mean, the Leviathan Wakes covers the special editions. We, which I love the pink, oh my God. Um, but um, we had this piece of art cause it was a piece of fan art. Um, mm that uh, had been a, a poster that a fan had done that came to our attention that we really love the style of. So we knew we were gonna use this piece of art, but I was having trouble like getting the type to kind of fit around it. And then mm. we were just like, screw it. What if we just go really big? <laughs> so I just made it as big as possible. And then it worked, so. 
So sometimes the type is easy, sometimes the type is not so easy. And the Justice of Kings looks absolutely stunning. My God, that one. <laughs> so you mentioned that you've been in the book cover industry for more than 20 years now. So what, mm -hmm. what made you start in the first place? Um, well, um, yeah, I was I mean, I'm a big I'm a big book fan. You can't see in this like screen, but I have a shelf of like, you know, I grew up reading a ton, but I grew up reading sci-fi fantasy books, you know, mm. um, and it was always a big deal to me. Um, and I was working in, I went to school of visual arts and I was already working in a comic book store. I had worked in a comic book store in high school and college um, in, in New York. And, uh, you know, that was kind of my world. Like I, it was geek stuff, you know? Um, and I had been working at Doubleday for a while, working on all kinds of stuff, fiction, nonfiction, whatever. I already had an Elvish tattoo. So I was already officially a geek. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> um, and uh, Orbit had been in the UK for maybe at least 20 years and they were coming over to the US to start an imprint. And, and the, book, the book design community was, is very small. So, um, you know, word got around, uh, like who's an art director and who is geeky already that can like work on, you know, work on this and, and word got around to me. Um, so that's how I ended up at Orbit. But, um, you know, I kind of was always in books. It was kind of all I ever wanted to do. I worked when I was in school. What's good about school of visual arts is uh, a lot of the teachers are working professionals. So you kind of tend to work with a lot of teachers. So I worked at Perry Ellis and fashion. I worked at um, MTV for a while. Um, I worked at small boutique design firms. And then when I worked at my first job out of school was St. Martin's Press, I was like, oh, well, that's it. That's the rest of my career. I'm going to be in books. You know, it's, it's over. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> so uh, within your 20 years of working now, do you, uh, which one are some of your favorite artists? And I know this is a very hard question to ask. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, there are some artists that, you know, I, and I adore almost all the artists I work with mm. already, or I wouldn't work, you know, I, I am in a lucky position that I kind of, like I said, I don't always choose who the artist is going to be, but I kind of control the options, mm. you know? Um, so I have a lot of relationships in the, in the fantasy art community. I've, you know, been, been a very active member and, and mentor for, you know, over 10 years, at least, you know, uh, since I've been at Orbit. Um, the best kinds of artists are the ones that you can bring into the process early as a thought person, you know, as like a, a partner in thinking, like the more collaborative the artist is, like I said, with Sam Weber, like we didn't know what we wanted. We just mm. knew if we got Sam and Joe and me in a room, we'd figure in the editor in a room, we'd figure it out, you know? Oh. So those are the most rewarding because I know the person, the artist is going to help me figure it out. So, I mean, that's people like, um, you know, Sam, Sam, that's people, that's why Tommy gets so much work because Tommy really, help, Tommy Arnold really helps you think through the, the process. Martina is definitely developing like that. Um, I need to kind of like look around. I have so many favorites. It's like asking me like who my favorite child <laughs> is, you know? Um, <laughs> and then there's a lot of designers too. It's not just illustrators. Um, yeah, yeah. My, designer, my in-house designer, Lisa Pompilio, who's done- Oh yeah, you know, she's good. She, she's great. Lisa Marie Pompilio. She's amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's amazing. She's amazing. And she's been at Orbit over five years and she works in-house and she, like, I don't know what I would do without her. She's just so uh. smart. And she's kind of the person that does a lot of the um, completely designed in-house covers. So like, oh, I see. Um, you know, this wasn't an illustrator that we hired. Lisa put together this cover from bits and pieces and things mm. and drawing things and stuff. So this is a totally designed in-house cover. So it's more kind of design forward than illustration, but it's uh, incredible, you know. So, um, but she also works on covers like, hold on, I'm just, I have so many like books behind me. <laughs> um, but like she worked on uh, City oh, of yeah. Dusk. That's beautiful. That so, one. Yeah, no, it came out great. And she had designed this whole cover and there was kind of a design in the circle behind. Mm -hmm. And like, we knew we kind of wanted to show more of the city itself, not just because it's called City of Us. So uh, <laughs> we hired uh, Ben Zweifel 
to just make like the cover was all designed and we we're like we need a city for the whole so we were able to lisa and i reached out to ben and he created a city for us you know and that's a point that you go back to the author and you're like what does your city look like uh, and sometimes they're like oh i know exactly and sometimes they're like i don't know <laughs> <laughs> well, those are fun projects too but um lisa also did does things like this so this is wild and wicked things that just came out so um really? she's she's incredible Ben, ben Zweifel was the one who did A Thousand Deaths of Ador Ben, right? Yes. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I remember And I'm name. very <laughs> excited. We just got approved um, Alex White's new book. I don't know if you know Alex White. Oh, but, yeah, I know. I know Alex White. Uh, their new book, August Kiko and the Mechas from Space is done, and Ben Zweifel did the art, and it looks so good. <laughs> I'm hoping it's going to launch next week, I think. Mm. So. Oh, by the way, speaking of uh, Ador Ben and also Ben's rival, I think the first time Thousand Deaths were, was released, it was by Tommy Arnold, right? It was, it was. And that's an interesting um, issue of like the art wasn't wrong. It like, it was a beautiful piece of art. I love Tommy's yeah. work. Like, obviously, <laughs> and Tommy did exactly what we wanted him to do. But that's kind of the danger sometimes of doing a cover so far in advance because the book often changes a bit oh. in the editing. So what happened with those books were um, when Thousand Deaths of Art or Ben first got pitched to us, hmm. it felt very character-based, kind of like okay. uh, Sam Weber's cover for um, um, the Rachel Aaron books. That I'm blanking on right now. Oh, uh, Eli, Eli Monpress. Eli Monpress. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So many books in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, so we were going for a very uh, Eli Monpress kind of look. Oh. Um, and then when the manuscript came in, you know, the final manuscript and it was edited and everything, and it came in, um, you know, and the way folks, sometimes we don't know how things are going to land, but then what the fan base is saying and what people are saying about the mm. book kind of changed that. So we realized that. Um, as cool as that character was, the books yeah. are actually much bigger and they're about the city and they're about the world and they're almost like more, like I said, like uh, we packaged it as kind of like adventure fantasy and it was more epic fantasy, like big world kind of very rich world building. Um, the magic is so interesting and great. So we realized that we should probably mm. back up and do that so that that signals like, you know, what are you put on the cover is really signaling to people who haven't read the book yet what the book is like. So if you yeah. like world fantasy, we wanted to point those folks at those books, even though we had wanted to point the, not that the adventure folks wouldn't like those books, but mm -hmm. we weren't signaling to the big world folks. So sometimes you don't get it right, even if the piece of art is wonderful. I mean, Tommy did a great job. Like yeah. I said, obviously it hasn't stopped us from working with Tommy. Um, but we, we definitely wanted to switch to a landscape kind of city and like kind of show that part. So that's why we did the rest of the series that way um, mm. and repackage the first one, uh, which, you know, I know people have very strong feelings about changing art. like midway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I think the fans think that we just do it willy nilly. There's it is always the last thing we want to do, you know, <laughs> but like currently sometimes the world gets in the way. Currently, I'm working with an artist. I don't want to name names, but yeah. working on an artist in a series and her entire family is in Ukraine and like she cannot work oh, on a cover right now. So like the world is literally in the way of, of like, I, I can't, we can't, you know, yeah. so I have to switch artists. And of course we're trying to maintain the same look, but like sometimes that artist is just not available for mm. reasons. You never want to hear that kind of reason. You always hope it's like, I'm getting too much good work and I'm too busy. You know, sometimes that happens, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so, you know, we never want to, or it's something like that, like Elon on press. And we're very conscious of fans being very upset when cover art changes or formats change and stuff. So that's why we redid the first cover so that people could have the whole set again in the uh, right and things like that. Yeah, we don't yeah, always yeah. do that, but you know, um, we're very conscious of it. It's never, sometimes I see comments on Twitter that are like, oh, did they not know what they were doing to us? I'm like, yes, I am a fan too. I have <laughs> It's always the last resort. <laughs> like we never <laughs> want to do that, but sometimes we have to, you know, like. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm definitely guilty of this myself, but yeah, thinking about it, there must be other reasons that we don't know on why the cover changes. 
yeah yeah there, there's <clears throat> always a reason it's never it's never like willy-nilly by accident also sometimes um you know people get upset about like things moving on spines and stuff sometimes it's just oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know there's a little bit of wiggle on press and like some books and some part of the press run will be fine and then it moved the shift you know it's all mechanical processes i saw oh. your um which your illustrated video this morning and i know there's a color difference between the us and the yeah. uk yeah they used bit. my files Oh. like exactly my files like we are i just gave them my files exactly the same way but that's just how the uk printer printed and the u.s printer printed it's just, oh. it just there's no way to control that you know because they're printing it exactly the same time so i can't finish my cover and like mail it to them and be like match this you know but it, it was the same exact files and sometimes there's just oh. I yeah. see, I see, I see. Now that's new to me. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes reprints that happens in, you know, like reprints will look a little different. And it's the same piece of art, it's the same files, but like, you know, so much affects printing, like if the oh. humidity is up, there's something that I know people hate on a paperback one, the, the, the inside of the page, the inside pages stick out a little bit from the cover. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, about, yeah. <laughs> that's about humidity when it's shipping. So trade paperbacks oh. are, are they're bound with the cover on them and then they're trimmed. So they're trimmed together, huh. but because the cover is coated paper, it doesn't absorb humidity, but the book itself absorbs humidity. So the inside pages creep out a little bit and there's just nothing we can do. So like books that print in August will have that more commonly than books that printed in you know December. It's just weird. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and I see people like flip out about it and I'm like, <laughs> it's outside um, of your control <laughs> yeah and i mean i feel it the same way i'm such a fan you know so um you know i i i feel everybody's pain but you know printing is a is is like not yeah, not yeah, a science yeah. it's definitely an art so <laughs> Wow, this is this is so new to me. <laughs> I didn't know about this. <laughs> come on, I'm happy to come on channels like this and just because there's there's usually a really an answer that like we know in publishing, but it doesn't get out to people. So you know that's I think that's a totally understandable answer. You know, people might still not like it, but it's not like yeah, yeah, we're yeah, not being yeah. careful or something like that. Like those books come back to the printer. I'm like, no, oh, the humidity again. <laughs> <laughs> the humidity. <laughs> And what uh, what are your stance on this? I think you you have seen people talking about this sometimes on Twitter. So maybe in science science fiction and fantasy right now there are two kind of maybe, well since a long time ago basically there are two kind of covers like right? illustration or maybe symbolism. Especially usually UK cover art uh, relies a lot on symbolism. But uh, what do you think about this? Do you prefer illustrations or maybe a symbolism like that? You know I think it really depends on the book. You know mm. again. Um, the i i like working on illustrated covers more because again there's that higher level of collaboration with an mm -hmm. artist but a lot of those symbols covers are done by illustrators as well you know like mm -hmm. you know, larry rostant in the uk does a lot of the the symbol based books he's done a lot of george r, r. martin books and um he's worked on a ton of books for us to do those like kind of symbols and and things like that so they're still illustrators it's the same process that we go through for like a painted cover, you know, or something like that. But um, the it's it's really about signaling to the fan base what's inside. So when you see a symbol cover, you know, mm. like there's gonna be politics in it, kind of. Uh. You know, if it's a house flag or if it's a shield or something like that, you know. Um, and there's a little wiggle, but I think that people don't realize how much subconscious information they're getting about uh. what's in that book from looking at it. So like. If you hold up, um, I see like shadow of what was lost there. Oh, yeah, I, love I can tell one. you like, yeah. So that cover way back at the beginning of the process, we were like, okay, it's not, it's, it's a big world book. James Ellington created these big, beautiful, oh, amazing oh. worlds, but putting just a landscape on or something like that is too, doesn't get the journey aspect across. And we were mm. talking about things like the original Eye of the World cover by Robert Jordan, which was a major influence for this. And we started working with the artist Dominic Sapinaro yeah. and he and I were going back and forth and all of his, the work in his portfolio is full color. Like hmm. these covers were always going to be full color. Um, and then 
Dominic's process was just, and we were talking about having multiple characters, but not focusing on any one. So feeling like they were setting off on a journey and like there was going to be a whole landscape behind them. Um, and then Dominic sent back the thumbnails, which just as it just happens that his process is that he does grayscale kind of, he paints digitally. So he does grayscale first. Um, mm. And it was a full scene. There's like mountains back there, everything like the full scene. And I got it in and I showed it and, and I, I started playing with just where the type would be. And like, I don't know, I was like, you know, this looks really good in grayscale. So like, what <laughs> if we kept it grayscale? Um, and then I started playing with um, having the, the foreground grayscale and the background color or the, you know, whatever. And then we ended up where, where you're, you know, the cover that you have now, which is this very stark background and pop of bright color. Um, and that's what went through the whole series. But Dominic almost had a heart attack <laughs> when I told him not to do it in color, I was like, can you finish this? Because it was still very sketchy. I was like, can you finish this piece of art in grayscale? And Dominic was like, what do you, what? What do you mean finish it in grayscale? And I said, <laughs> and he's like, I need a minute. <laughs> like, so you, okay, sure. You know, and it turned into such great covers, but like, we kind of felt that way there together. So like that process, only happens kind of when there's another person in the, that you're bouncing off of and like working on together. And like, neither of you knows what the cover is gonna end up looking like really. And then you get to this weird place that neither of you expected, but obviously came out really cool. So like, that's really fun. Um, but sometimes it's just really fun to work on a cover in your, in, in you know, your own head. Um, so like I worked on, I worked on all Nora Jemison's ah. book. So I did this whole cover from scratch, The City mm -hmm. We Became. Um, and I'm from New York. I'm a New York native. I had a lot to do. Like Nora and I talked a lot about this book. I'm, I grew up on Staten Island. So that was like the one borough Nora didn't know very well. So mm. it, I gave her a lot. I had done a, a map for her to explore Staten Island and it ended up being, you know, the map that was in the book. Like, you know, we kind of, this is, so I made the map for the inside of the book, you know, like wow. I did, <laughs> like, Working one on one with an author like that back and forth is really fun. Also, and then like the I don't know if you can see them, but this there's like there's tentacles. Oh, there you go, you can see it. But they oh, yeah, kind yeah, of are yeah, just yeah, yeah. Blind, yeah. blind spot gloss. So that's very fun too. And this was no third party artist. It was just me kind of working on the cover and getting there and looking at pictures of New York and and like kind of like as a New York native and sci fi fantasy fan and Nora fan, just being like, mm. okay, what do I, what, what would I want out of this book as a fan? And then trying to do it as a, which is hard sometimes because those are the covers that are the most pressure. You're like, oh my God, I'm such a fan of this person and I'm the target audience. And now I have to like put all that a little bit aside and do a cover. <laughs> a lot of stress. A lot of stress. <laughs> but that's really fun too. And that's not collaborating with, with an, an illustrator. It's kind of almost collaborating with like two sides of your own head, yeah, like the yeah. fan yeah. and the mm. designer. Um, next week we just, I just designed the, the second book, the next book. So that's going to release this ah, week too. So. <laughs> <laughs> and recently uh, you just, you just, uh, you Orbit Books just announced a League of Legends. <laughs> you're working crazy. on that cover for so long. <laughs> crazy, crazy. <laughs> yeah, because then that's bringing a whole level of expertise into the room that like a whole nother company kind of you know we had a whole team of, at riot that we were working with the editor and the uh, author and the, and the um you know the whole team the whole po you know team story team at riot um so we were they i don't want to say too much yeah. there's more art <laughs> that's going to be in those books than just the cover so some so the cover orbit did and, um, you know, with back and forth, there was a lot of back and forth about what the cover should be and kind of like, oh. what's fun about that process is it's so collaborative, like Riot teamed up with Orbit because they wanted it, the book to not just appeal to League of Legends fans, which is mm. kind of easier to do. Mm. Um, they also wanted it to be, it's a really good book. I've read the manuscript um, mm. as I'm not a League of Legends player, but my partner is. So mm -hmm. I've been watching it out of the corner of my eye for a long time but um, but I don't it's too stressful to play I can't <laughs> um, I play other games but my game is too stressful uh, I'm like there's a 14 year old cursing a man <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my god I totally um, understand this 
yeah, but I really have always respected um, how they how they approached uh, character creation and IP. And we were working on this way before Arcane came out, and that was amazing. So you know, kind of like they obviously uh, really care about story and their characters and their world. Um, so, but they came to Orbit because they we wanted we want this book to appeal to fantasy fans that have never played League of Legends and don't know what League of Legends is, and we just want it to look like a great fantasy book in an interesting world and it is like a lot of people who never played League of Legends watched Arcane we also while still really being making sure the League of Legends fans are happy with what we're doing and excited about what we're doing we also want to appeal to people who don't know League of Legends you know? yeah yeah so true, true. I think I think we nailed it we'll see people seem excited <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure a lot of people will love this and I think from the reaction well, earlier, yeah, I think it is it is working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's it's hard, you know, especially with a fan base that's really rabid that already exists. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that we don't have to deal with as much because mm -hmm. we're usually the origin of of something. Like like we do a book like the Expanse. You know, when mm -hmm. when I did when I worked on the first Expanse cover, nobody knew what the nobody knew what the Expanse was. So there's a lot less pressure. Now yeah. there's pressure because there's all these fans. Well, back then there was no pressure. <laughs> so, you know. so um, it's different to get that pressure at the beginning. <laughs> You're like, yeah. okay, if we don't do this right, we're gonna have a lot of pissed off fans. <laughs> a lot of pissed off fans. <laughs> so. Oh, by the way, speaking of the expense, I'm really glad that Daniel Doshu is back to do Age of Ash because it's awesome. The cover art is awesome. Super yeah, cool. Yeah, when. It, it's so cool. And, and I love working with Daniel. Um, mm. he, he's probably the person that I do the least work, you know, oh. like I just send Daniel a little like paragraph that comes from Daniel or Daniel and Ty, if it's an expanse uh. book. And I'm just like, have fun. I believe in you. It always works. <laughs> You know, and the expanse books are so good, you know, like, and, and it's never been a case of, we've always been wanting to get a feeling and expression and excitement in those covers, which Daniel does so well, They're not necessarily depictions of exactly the tech in the book or anything like that, but they just, they just look so good and feel so right <laughs> to the story that it's okay. Yeah, um, yeah. And when, when Daniel, when we knew we were publishing, um, Daniel, I, I mean, Obviously, and then it's Daniel Abraham and Daniel Dashio. Um, so when we had Daniel Abraham's book, um, the fan, you know, Age of Ash, I, you know, we were talking about it in house, and we were like, well, who's gonna be good enough that the Expanse fans are gonna be happy? And I was like, why, why are we reinventing the wheel? Oh, thank you. Yeah. I was like, yeah. why are we reinventing the wheel? Let's just ask Daniel to do it. And they were like, oh, can he do fantasy? I was like, have you seen Guild Wars? <laughs> Because Daniel was the art director, creative director for Arena Net for like all of the Guild War Guild Wars years. So I was like, yeah, he could do fantasy. Don't worry about it. Definitely. <laughs> so um, so that was fun. So I had no idea what I was gonna get. You know, those are the emails you get in your inbox, and like they ping in your inbox, and there's an attachment, and you're like, oh, what am I gonna get? <laughs> <laughs> Super cool. And you know, I was thinking uh, usually when you start designing a cover or in the planning process i'm sure that there's a lot of planning that goes into it right but uh sometimes you get a trilogy or maybe a quartet or maybe sometimes well even more than four books uh, in the series so how much planning do you take into account for that i mean for example do you make the first uh, the cover for the first book in mind to align with the second and third book and so on yeah um we usually know when things are definitely going to be a standalone. Sometimes that uh, doesn't always hold because if a book is supposed to be mm. a standalone, it does really well sometimes, but it, sometimes we do more. You know, <laughs> if you don't have a good idea, we're going to keep going. Um, but, but a lot of times, especially in sci-fi fantasy, we know things come in as trilogies or they come in, you know, the, all three books haven't been written yet, but we know they're supposed to be a trilogy or whatever. Mm -hmm, uh, or they're just open-ended. Um, I will never design something or or illustrate something that I don't think could work over multiple books oh. and there are things that we do there are sometimes ideas that come in hmm. and and you know it usually doesn't affect the first book oh yeah yeah it usually affects the second book because if we do something 
that locks, you know, if the type treatment or the color of the art or something is exactly the same on the second book as the first book, then you got to do it the whole series, okay. you know? So, so it usually doesn't affect the first book. It usually affects how free we are on the second book, because that's when you're really nailing down, um, if the type placement is going to be the same on every book in the series, then then keep it the same on books one and two. But you can't have it be the same on books one and two and then radically different for number three. Then people are like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so, you know, and also, I mean, series colors are funny. You know, like people joke. They're like, well, book one is red. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Book three can be like gold or sometimes green or sometimes purple. And then like after five colors, you're like, it's red again. (laughs) (laughs) You know, and that's because that's because there's only so many colors that um, really uh, jump out at people on screen. Like, Like, you know, the expanse we can get away with magenta, but you can't do Mm. that for every series. Like, look, I can't do a Joe Abercrombie book in magenta. It's just not. (laughs) Um, so, you know, series to series, you, you get away with what, what you can. I mean, you know, it, you've got the Nicholas Eames books behind you. You know, that was a big conversation about the type color on Kings of the Wild was red. And if oh, yeah. we made it red on book two, then we mm. have to make it red on every book, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So, so the conversations really come up. Look, most designs are not hard to turn into a series. Mm. But it's it doesn't affect book one. It really affects book two. Mm. And you know, uh, speaking of design changes, especially as we, we talked about this earlier. But uh, how do you approach this? I mean, sometimes well, circumstances happen, and you have to change cover artists, or maybe the design have to change. How do you approach this? Um, it's different in every case. It really mm. depends. Um, you know, it depends on my relationship with the artist. It really depends on the reason why you're changing. You know, like oh, okay. I could go to Tommy and say, um, you know, we loved your cover for Order Ben, but we're we're changing the series style. And Tommy's like, don't worry about it. I got that. Uh, I got awards for that illustration. Yeah. So like, he wasn't hurt because like ah. he knew. He also knew he's got he's going to get other work from us. So it's not like losing work. Um, I think if it's not the artist's fault, if the artist uh, did exactly what we asked them to do. I mean, I've been at Orbit for 14 years. Yeah. We have never killed a cover piece of cover art or cover series because it was badly done. You know, uh, we've, we've killed pieces of cover art because, the you know, like I said, the manuscript came in and it wasn't right for the book that we actually ended up getting or, you know, or something happened. But it, it's very rarely like, the artist Mm. disappeared or it was a bad piece of art. Like that almost never happens, you know? Um, Sometimes, you know, when we're not sure about a cover design or a cover direction, we'll pay an artist just to do thumbnails, just to do concepts, you know? Like sometimes if I have have a belief that a certain artist is gonna do a good job or Uh. is the right person for the book and and the editors and the publisher are like, "Mm, we don't know. Um, I'm like, let's pay them for thumbnails. I, I think uh-huh. this is going to work out. And then we can look at the thumbnails and, and the artist knows they're getting paid for the thumbnails. I'm not like secretive about it. So it's not really uh-huh. like a kill. Um, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, they know that they're being hired to do exploratory work. You know, it's almost like mm. concept art for a book cover, you know. So they're concepting the cover. They know they're getting paid for that. They know more work might come out of it if, if we go in that direction, but they also know it's like very up in the air. So I'm very like transparent with artists about that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, there's, there's always a reason, you know, uh, if you're changing artists and if it's not because the artist did a bad job, then I'm just very, I'm like, this is not you. This is mm-hmm. why. You know, and, and if you're giving people reasons, they're all, like I said, you know, there's usually reasons for what why we're doing what we're doing, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is so fun. I haven't and you burned know, a lot of bridges. In- <laughs> <laughs> one or two. Uh, by the way, I think Dominic Saponaro should do more cover art, you know. He, this is one of the best that Orbit has done so far. I love this cover great. art. great. Yeah. yeah, and it's well, always like picking picking new um, artists too is tough because I want to work with the folks that I've done a great job with. Uh-huh. You also like kind of rest artists in between authors. Like an artist gets so um, attached to an author series. There's very few artists that we would have work on multiple authors series at the same time because mm-hmm. their looks are too similar. 
some yeah. artists you can, of course, but but some some you can't. So you know, you give them almost a rest, a, lo- a little bit of a break at the end of a series, and then you know, I'm always looking to to ha- folks I had a good time with that did great covers. Like, of course, I want to work with them again, but sometimes the right book hasn't come through yet, and you've got to balance working with. At least I do my best to balance working with folks that are um, really established in the industry and great along with new talent like I love being someone's first book cover you know like we've been talking a ton about Martina um Uh I met Martina at a seminar at illustration masterclass a couple of years ago I mean before the pandemic you Uh know and and her work was so good and she just got just talking to her she got so much about book covers I was like keep an eye on this (laughs) and you know the the witcher I mean the Mm. witcher she'd been doing work for magic already you know um but the witcher inside illustration came out she had done a witcher piece for a different company and a different cover and i knew that she was into the witcher Mm. so i was like can you do this yennefer the yennefer came in it was so gorgeous awesome Awesome. so good (laughs) so gorgeous that i was like at the same time that that piece of art came in i was figuring out who should do the cover for Justice of Kings. And I literally just showed it in the cover meeting. I was like, look at this. And the editor was like, so let me send it. <laughs> you know? So, you know, and so now, you know. It's still so surprising to me that Justice of Kings is her first cover art for Orbit Books. Oh my God. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. good. I mean, it, take, it takes some time. A lot of times I usually know, sometimes talent just comes out of the blue. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of times I, I I feel like it's so much a part of my job to not just know what's going on in the site, in the fantasy art community, but also help nurture it that I usually see people coming a couple of years ahead of them being ready and they'll be working on other things, self-published books, oh. magic cards, things like that. And also like, remember like books move so, so like I had like, just as it came, came out now, but like we were working on it a year ago. So oh, yeah. if you remember, you know, magic cards come out a lot faster. So sometimes yeah, yeah. I will be, have been working with that person when it was time to work with them, but the book just took a while, you know, uh, to come out. Yeah, so yeah, um, yeah. Martina's working on more stuff from me. I pretty much like, also like, that's the thing too. If you keep working with people that you adore and love to work with, you never find the new people you love and adore to work with. So mm-hmm. like, I wouldn't, if I, went back to the same safe folks, I would never have a Martina. Makes or, sense. You know, yeah. I yeah, wouldn't have had a Tommy true. Arnold. You know, I was one of the first person, first people that gave Tommy a cover job, me and Irene at tour, you know, ah. so you've got to keep developing new talent. And that's also how you get diversity into the genre as well. Like it's been really important to me. Um, when I started at Orbit, there were not as many um, women artists working at the top of the field that I could hire. And uh, I, you know, I think all of the art directors in sci-fi fantasy, I can't take credit for it, but Irene, me, um, you know, some of the other art directors, especially at, like magic, cause we share so many artists with like wizards of the coast, things like that. Um, all the art directors there, uh, a lot of the art directors there are women. Um, and we felt it was really important to get more representation of women in sci-fi fantasy art. We knew they were there. We just went out of our way to, to help mentor the talent. Um, and I feel the same way about BIPOC folks. I feel the same way about uh, different gender expressions. And I think mm-hmm. like, that's a really important part of my job. You know, it's like being a gardener, you know, you've got to do the work to make sure that you have the best options in the world to work on these covers, you know, and that, mm-hmm. and that takes development work you know, a couple of years in advance too. So. And I'm really glad that you did that because be- without you, I wouldn't even, uh, I wouldn't know about the name of Sasha Vino Gradova who did uh, The Bone yeah. Daughter and The Bone Oh, Daughter. I know, I love those covers. Oh my God, that, that cover. <laughs> and so Sasha good. had been working, Sasha had been working in um, YA fantasy books for a little while. So I stole her ah. from, um, I'm friends with the creative director of, of LBYR, Little Brown Kids. So they uh-huh. do a lot of fantasy that's just, just over the river in YA. So sometimes we steal some of their artists too. So, and as as we talk about earlier, because some some uh, uh, a lot of women are, artists are incredible, incredible. Martina Pachkova, Sasha Vinogradova, and then there is also Carla Ortiz, and so many more. So, so many, many more. yeah. I mean, even yeah. in The Witcher, it was very important to me to be as diverse as possible, picking artists. So half of the illustrations are by women. You know, I got as many BIPOC folks as I could in there. Um, 
I, I think, I wish there was more um, BIPOC representation among artists in high fantasy. And, and I'm mm. working very hard to, to help folks through that are, you know, that are, are working in that space. Um, because I think, uh, this is a longer conversation, but you know, I think <laughs> the, the style of art that fantasy, um, you fantasy fans require or fantasy requires uh, can sometimes be a, a barrier to entry for, mm -hmm. for BIPOC artists. And it goes back into art school and availability of mentorships and availability of art school and opportunities. It's a much bigger conversation that yeah, people yeah. are having is a very important conversation to have. There just aren't as many, <clears throat> there are tons of, of uh, BIPOC artists in editorial, in comics, in, in, in other genres. And I'm, I'm really, and there are, there are some in fantasy and I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to pull um, those folks up mm -hmm. to, to book covers. And there are, there are some, you know, yeah. but uh, you know, Carla being a great example, but um, I want there to be more. So. Well, I'm definitely excited to see the result. <laughs> right. uh, by the way, uh, we have talked about uh, cover design for almost an hour now. So let's now talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So I've this got mine. is, yeah. So this is, uh, for those of you who don't know, this is the Witcher Illustrated Edition. I just did a review on this book. And I know yeah, I watched this, it this morning. Yeah. <laughs> and this cover. You know what you is, didn't, you didn't reveal though, was uh, what is that. It? Covers are all, if you look at them through the Google app on your phone, they all Oh animate. my God. Yeah, I forgot to yeah. mention that. <laughs> that was like the biggest thing. Um, yeah. oh I don't my have God, my phone yeah. set up now, but every single illustration in here animates the yeah, best it, part. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. And it is super cool. I can't believe I forgot to mention that. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> how how do you do? How do you do that anyway? Okay. So um, here, I'll do it for you right now. Where's my yeah. Google app? So you download the Google app on your phone. It's Android, or obviously, or you know, regular, uh, you know, iPhone. Hold on, it's going to take a second to open on my phone. Um, yeah. And then you just look at it through the camera on your mm -hmm. phone. Here, I, can try. I, I have I have actually tried this, and yes, it worked super super cool. But I yeah. just don't know how how did you how did you came up with that? <laughs> it's like magic. <laughs> We've been doing it on book covers for for a couple of years now so we've been animating book covers of our especially our debut authors because again it's hard to get debut authors paid attention to you know like uh, yeah 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 you know people know the name joe abercrombie they know that you know they know the big names but they don't know a brand new author um so we try to do things to get you know a little bit of attention um mm -hmm. okay so i'm on the google app this is not an ad for google but i'm just looking <laughs> through my phone Okay, let's see if I can do this right. Okay, all right. Let's see if I can do this. Um, so you hold up your phone and yeah. you look at the cover. Let's see. And go. it kind of like reads the cover. Yeah, there you go. Loads and animation. Oh, 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 so beautiful. But it nah. does it for all the interior illustrations too. So like Yennefer has magic that like yeah. animates and stuff. So that's the most fun part. And, and nobody's done... A lot of people have done covers, but nobody's done, uh, well, not a lot of people, but some people have done covers. We've been doing covers, but nobody's done interior illustrations like that. So it's been fun. We have like a little partnership with Google, our, our digital team works on it. So oh. so what we do is we hire folks to, or our in-house designer, Steph Hess, um, animates the covers. So we have the covers in layers and things, and then we, uh, we make a little video and through Google, we can like, I don't know, magic. <laughs> so when the, when the phone sees the cover, it maps the cover. You can kind of see it mapping it. And then it'll pull up the video from its files that's supposed to go there. But if you like uh, tilt the cover, it tilts the video too. It's very cool. So, and I think, very, uh, correct, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong here. I think I, uh, there was, uh, uh, maybe it was the Rage of Dragons. Uh, if you put it on the back, Everwinter will speak. Oh yeah, all the yeah. covers that we have um, animated also have like the author talking if you scan the back cover. So yeah. it's like a little author snippet, which is fun. Seriously, it's, yeah. it's like magic. It's really like magic. This one, this one doesn't, The Witcher doesn't um, because we uh, did all the interior illustrations, but but most of the, the debut cover, the debut mm. author cover, I think the Justice of Kings cover does it. And I think Richard's talking in the back. Um, but I am allowed to tell you that I'm working on, this is, you heard it here first. 
literally have not said anything. What? I'm working on Sword of Destiny right now. No, no way. <laughs> really? <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh my god, I just so, talk about I just talk about it in my review. <laughs> I know. I'm working on it right now. Oh my so, god, that is super great news. That is super great news. <laughs> I know. I'm so excited. I can't tell you anything else about it, but it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I'm I'm so looking forward to it. Right now. The artists are uh, working right now. So. Are they are they different artists? Are they the same? Come on, just a bit. <laughs> a little, it's a little bit of both. Oh, okay, 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 okay. A little, a little bit, bit of both. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm so excited. <laughs> you know, and it's gonna be, it's not gonna be red. It'll, I can't tell you what color it's gonna be because I think that might give away mm-hmm. who's on the cover. But I'm just gonna be a different color. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but know. otherwise, it'll it'll completely match. You know the the same effects and and the package will look the same. So they should, you know, work together. Mm, okay, okay. Oh, but so for this one, I think uh, we almost talked about this. Uh, the UK publisher is Golangs, right? So mm-hmm. do you just send all the files to them and they just yeah. print them? Yeah. So Hachette US and Hachette UK mm-hmm. um, are this kind. Of, I mean, they're not the same company. International business law, I don't understand. But we have mm. an agreement that. So when I license art from from uh, artists, I license for world English use. And this gets oh. into the nitty gritty of like copyright law and things like that. So I get world English use and then we we share with Hachette. So it's for Hachette. It's the Hachette contract. And then, you know, um, usually it's Orbit, Orbit uh, UK that we share files with, but sometimes it's blanks. But because mm-hmm. they're also in Hachette UK. So but it's all the same family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, so- and then, Oh, sorry. I was going to say then foreign publishers. I know a lot of people ask immediately about, is this coming out in France? Is this coming out in Germany? Is ah, this coming yeah. out in Germany? Um, we have sub rights teams that are happy to um, release, you know, share these files. So, uh-huh. um, but they need to go back to the, they contact our sub rights team and we kind of say like, you can have these files, but you must clear them with the artist first, you know? So they, you know, the, the foreign countries, I know some of the, I can't reveal them, but I know some of them have cleared the rights with the artists and are going to come out with their own versions. So, oh, wow. you know, and we'll give them the files. It should look exactly the same, but, but they need to get the rights from the artists. Cause you know, I'm very protective of my artists, you know, yeah, make sure yeah. everybody, everybody's clear. <laughs> so, well, uh, uh, and this, you are working with nine, nine artists, right? You're working yeah. with nine. Yeah. So how do you yeah. choose with, how do you choose who's doing the cover art and who's doing well, the interior artwork? Tommy, in that one, it was one, I think it was eight because Tommy did, we, we got Tommy to do the cover, but one of the cover sketches were so good, we used it for the inside. That's why he has a piece ah, of Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. A grain of truth. Yeah, 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 that one. And then we got all the way through the, um, the illustration, the full page illustrations, one for each story. So there's seven stories. Um, and then we realized that we didn't have a good shot of dandelion who's vascular if you've mm. watched the show mm. and we're like we've got to have a dandelion <laughs> so uh, i reached out to kiri leonard who's a great artist who is a big fan of the witcher also and um, has done witcher pieces before and i was like can you do a dandelion and she was like yes i can do it <laughs> she did a really fast rest which i really appreciate so we were like holding the book from being on press and i was like we did a dandelion what are we doing? <laughs> Um, but then we got to do really fun things. I mean, I drove the production team nuts, but like we got to use him on the last page and he's got a little quote. So yeah. he opens the book and he ends the book and he's kind of fun. You know, he's kind of, he, he pops fun. up. Yeah, he pops up in places. So, so yeah. So now we have, we'll have a different dandelion. Mm. But I'm going to stop talking about it because I'm going to leave something that I'm not allowed to say. I had to ask for permission to uh, say that we were, that I, what I was working on, so. I mean, just knowing that sort of destiny is being worked on already made me super happy. <laughs> because I keep I on thinking, know. as I read through this, I keep on thinking, oh, come on, we need a sort of destiny too. <laughs> I agree, although it is a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, can you tell us about all the, I mean, maybe just briefly, or up to you, you want to go into detail, I don't mind, uh, the detail for doing an illustrated edition like this. I don't think a lot of people understand just how difficult it is. Well, I mean, you're also working with, instead of one artist that you're working mm. on the cover <clears throat> and maybe like a map artist, you know, cause I also am in charge of doing the maps for the insides of books. Um, so instead of working on working with maybe two artists for a book, you're working with 10 
you know so that's just <laughs> scheduling and contracts i mean all the paperwork is times 10 all the emails back and forth are times 10 all the cover meetings you know when we're looking at the art and everything is times 10 you know we're obviously showing stuff to the author and back and you know there's a lot going on so um especially with something like the witcher mm. uh so um it's it balloons work but also i designed the inside which i usually don't do as much of so the inside of prose books mm. there's compositors that work oh. on them so i might give them you know they'll hold pages for the maps and then oftentimes uh what's a good example hold on okay so like the inside of like wild and wicked things right so um okay. there's no map in this but okay. we designed the title page because it's oh. using all you know, using all the cover art. We don't, we don't get a chance to do that for every book, but a lot of books, you know, we'll just do a little bit of that. And then there's also sections in this book. So we did, you know, fancy section kind of breaks, uh, but the actual text pages, I don't have anything to do with. I don't, we don't do that. Mm -hmm. That's a whole nother department, yeah. um, you know, making sure, and it's a lot, making sure you don't like screw up words, you know, like how it flows, you yeah. know, things people don't think about, like, how big the margins are and how big the type mm. is and how many pages it takes. This is a whole nother department's expertise. Um, but for the inside of The Last Wish, since it's, you know, really like the first illustrated fancy edition that Orbit has done, I mean, Leviathan Wakes is a fancy edition, but the actual text pages didn't change that much. We added oh. some, some fancy pages inside, but the actual like part you read is, is much the same. Um, we didn't, do that but for the witcher it's two color on the inside all the illustrations have to fit in so i'm picking like what page in the story the illustration should be across from and then you know what the actual um you know page layouts look like so it's not just you know like i designed this page which is just a table of contents because it's like what's red mm. what's black but also oh, yeah. the design for you know how the chapter opens we're going to look so oh, I, I, love, designed, I love that. I love that. Yeah. So I designed <laughs> all of that and then had to give all those bits and pieces to, I kind of did the style sheet. So I didn't actually type out the words and put them yeah. in, but I gave the style sheet for all of the interior, what should be red, what should be black, what borders, what sizes, like all that stuff. So that's a lot more work than I usually do for a book. Usually I'm just, just the art but yeah. which was nice and worth doing for this project for sure but and i assume that you are also the one who decides that that almost the art almost all the art will feature the color of black and, and red yeah well that also comes from printing so um if you look at illustrated books sometimes mm. they're black and white books with just a just color pages inserted those are called yeah. inserts oh uh, yeah, um, yeah okay and that's one way to do it but what we really wanted to do was have, and it's, it's, you know, you pay kind of by how many color pages you have. Um, but then the rest of the book is black and white. So like the title pages and everything. So what we decided would be cool was to have the whole book be two color. And then all the illustrations are two color, but you could use, so like at the beginning, like the dandelion pieces or, um, you know, at the beginning, you know, just being able to put these little extra pieces of art in, we wouldn't have been able to do that you know, or these pages with the little cameos of the art. We oh, wouldn't yeah. have been able to do that with inserts. We needed the whole uh, book to be color. And then it's, um, you know, we could have made the whole book for color, sure. But, you know, especially thinking ahead to series and just Orbit's aesthetic. And this is kind of where it's like, it's not just a cool design, it's an Orbit design, like kind of like design forward, minimum palette seemed very like design forward and very Orbit. So we went for two color. <laughs> so how, how much freedom do you give to the artists here? I mean, you are working with a lot of artists and all yeah. of their art are stunning. And as I said in my review, I think it worked for the short story they got. So how much freedom do they have? Well, on, on Last Wish, we kind of decided, I got the team together and then we were <clears> all kind of deciding like who wanted to do what story. Mm -hmm. um, but we kind of knew also roughly like, um, you know, some people are landscape artists. They're not going to do uh, portraits, you know, because so we kind of knew kind of roughly like what stories could use a landscape, what could use a character. Like you're not going to have Martina do take Yennefer's story and then do a landscape. If you're going to oh, take, yeah. you know what I mean? So it, it's kind of part of how you decide what artists are going to do it, mm -hmm. you know, 
I kind of knew when we hired Martina, she'd probably do either a Jennifer or a Siri or something like that. So like you kind of know, but you don't know exactly. But then the actual, the, the, the fun of it is like, you know, like you said that you really love Bruce's piece, Bruce Bernays' oh, piece. Oh, love, um, love it so much. <laughs> I love, love it too, so much. But like Bruce is a landscape artist. He's not yeah. a portrait artist. So like, you know, I said, this is your story. Well, actually, he kind of, we picked together. But anyway, he wanted to do that story. It worked. Ah, okay. Landscape worked. He said, this is my idea for the concept. I was like, go for it. He did a thumbnail. Sometimes you do multiple thumbnails, but like we really talked about what the idea was. So he just did one thumbnail. It looked great. We got, you know, when we're sending them around, like I don't get to decide. I got to show the editor. We have to show uh, the publisher. Uh, you know, you know. Um, and then we all decided that it was good. And then we're like, go to final. And then he went to final and then we did it. So, uh, okay. so there's a lot of, you know, um, some artists wanted more input. Um, mm. Generally, digital artists show less stages because they can always go backwards. Uh, Traditional yeah. artists who are painting, um, like Winona Nelson's piece in the back, um, was a watercolor. So, like, you can't go mm. backwards. You can do a little, but like, yeah. once you paint it, it's painted, you know. So, we went over the thumbnail a little more carefully, um, made sure before she put it in paint, we were all settled on it and things like that. So, it's also like, like we said, artists, uh, authors are very different in how much input they have. Sometimes art, you know, all the artists are very different depending on medium, just how they work. Some artists are very happy to like, like I said, I do the least work with Daniel Dashu yeah, because yeah. I send him a paragraph and he sends me back a finished piece. But he also knows he works digitally, but he also knows that if there's something that he needs to change, he needs to go back and change it. But he would just rather have a run at the final. Some other people, especially painters, especially somebody like Sam Weber, who's doing stuff in traditional medium hmm. physically, you know, they kind of want to send a, a thumbnail and then they want to send a sketch and then they want to send like a rough painting and then they want to finish it up, you know, so you're not going backwards. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's different, really, artist to artist, how much uh, back and forth you have. So how long does it take for you to do to make this project come to fruition? I mean, it depends on what you count as the start. Um, I hope it's very long, right? <laughs> it was probably six months. Oh, oh really? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That is fast. <laughs> from when I started working on it, it was probably okay. six um, oh. And then, you know, and then it goes to the printer and gets printed. So that's a couple of months before it comes out. But like my actual, like, shepherding probably uh. took six months. Oh, I, and in my head, I thought it was two years or something. <laughs> well, I mean, the editors are talking about the idea of doing this kind of project much further in advance. Mm -hmm. So that changes book to book. Sometimes we have bought a book and it takes a couple years to get it done and out. But, um, you know, from the point that I have it on my desk to when I pass it on to the printer and prayed, um <laughs> it was about six months <laughs> you always uh, have to sending stuff to the printer is like i said you know it's not a it's not a science it's an art so it's it's always yeah. very stressful you know like especially something like i just got kai k back in the mail and with yeah. all the delicate pieces pieces of gold foil and like her hair is a different color than her skin but not too different it was very stressful sending mm. this one to the printer so when it's back and it's in your hands and it's safe you're like Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Very really stressful good. opening those printer packages. Every time you're about to open a printer package, you're like, please let it be okay. <laughs> this is truly something new. I really didn't think about this uh, when it comes to the matter of cover up and design. <laughs> I know. And that's, again, that's why, that's why I was mm. happy to talk to you because I think people don't realize how how much is going on behind the scenes too mm -hmm. but also yeah, yeah. you know how deeply we care like i care so i'm just as much of a fan as anybody so like you know i don't have kids these are my kids you know all the <laughs> order books are my kids <laughs> but sometimes you just have to do something that maybe you don't like right for example like well cover design as i said if that you just kind of have to do it sometimes you mean I don't like the book or I don't like the cover? <laughs> no, I mean, you don't like the fact that you have to do the cover change. You have to do a cover change because- Oh, uh, yeah. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes yeah. you're forced into, you're doing the best you can with what you've got. And sometimes yeah. the world gives you 
stuff. You know, there are some covers that, you know, came in quick and, and either the artist had, I mean, the whole pandemic experience was <sighs> very stressful because, you know, <laughs> artists were getting sick and, you know, we were adjusting deadlines and, and running up to deadlines and things. And like, obviously you're so understanding of like, the world is on fire, you know, yeah. like, it still is, you know? So you're, as an art director, as a creative director, you're trying to, you know, manage and the authors too are having a hard time anyone, yeah. you know, creative. So you're, you're, you're hurting I'm... cat kind of, you know, <laughs> hoping everything comes out. Okay. So, you know, but you know, I'm not going to throw an artist off a job if they get COVID yeah. in the middle of a job, like you can't, you know, so you're, you're always managing stuff. You're like, okay, well, I can steal this much time from production and I can do this and I can do that. And you're working back and forth. Sometimes artists get hurt. Sometimes, you know, schedules change, like, you know, it's, it's, it's a moving target sometimes. So, but I don't get to put I, that in the book, you know, I don't yeah. get to like write an equation. <laughs> exactly. Know? I think, I think this is something that a lot of people should know. I mean, I too should, I too want to know about this. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. And, you know, I, I assume that Sapkowski doesn't have anything to do with the cover art, right? Or cover design. Oh, I don't know why you'd, why do you assume that? Yeah. I mean, we're not, not going to put out a cover that the author, you know, doesn't nah, see. I'm just, I'm just saying this because Sapkowski looks like, guy <laughs> that doesn't care too much about that kind of stuff <laughs> so I, I think i think a lot of that is also like um i i don't i don't talk to him directly much. Ah, okay, okay okay we talk to the agent but we he ah. sees everything you know oh I, nice <laughs> yeah. and um you know he has his own feelings which i know have been made public about you know we always use the the video game art. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah. Um, which made sense in the market because people in the U.S. knew the cover, knew the books because of the game more than knew the game because of the cover. The books were written first, you know. Mm -hmm. I think that's come more to light, especially with the Netflix show. You know, there were books first and then CD Projekt Red did the games. Um, but he's a superstar in in Poland, in Eastern mm -hmm. Europe. And um, I think it it's to, you know, back when the game the books first came out you know it made sense for us to use the game art which is gorgeous from cd project but i still have some of them here um i was just looking at the sort of destiny ones so we, we used concept art from the game which was gorgeous and really connected with the fan base um but but now the fan base is so much bigger you yeah. know when we're, if there's the netflix game and then you have to be careful as a cover artist because when we were doing the illustrated edition you don't want it to look like henry cavill you know, oh, yeah, yeah, not, yeah. you know, you don't want it to look exactly like the game, you know, and, and we, we have to be careful to not to do things from the book and not from mm. the show or from the video game and stuff. And sometimes the fan base doesn't understand that either. Um, and sometimes it's such fine details that we, we mess up a little bit, but um, we're, we're trying to do the best we can, making sure that it's just from the book and just things from the book, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> well, to be fair, I also came to the books from the games. <laughs> oh no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. Um, anyway, I got off topic, but I think um, Sapkowski is very is is happy to is he sees everything, but he's very yeah, okay. happy to see you know new editions, and that's always exciting for an author. So yeah, yeah. He hasn't well, he hasn't killed he hasn't killed any of the artists I picked. Or <laughs> <laughs> well, just, so far so good. sometimes i just cannot tell whether he's serious or not in this interview you know <laughs> because you know, he's, so, he's, he's, he's so quite funny a character sometimes. yeah yeah he's he has not caused he has not caused any any direct trouble for me though we're good <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness i think that's his you know that's that's his thing you know also authors are not the same people in interviews as they are in in life yeah, you know yeah. people are and celebrities are we are it you know like <laughs> i think you have to take everything with a grain of salt well i think uh this this has this interview has been really fun i'm just gonna ask one more question and to sure. end the to end the interview so this is this question has been asked quite a lot of times and i think uh it's kind of important because this one is not kind of related to cover art and cover design but what other aspect of book design, in your opinion, that are so underrated in terms of their importance? For example, like typeface, margin, or title page, or something like that. Well, I think the thing that people don't realize is how much the actual font and spacing and layout mm. of the reading pages, it affects how you feel about a book. Um, 
you know, just a, a, an eighth of an inch difference in margin or how big a tech, big text is or how small, but like, you know, is it serif? Is it, is it, you know, you get so much subconscious um, uh, emotion from typefaces that, that people who are not trained to pay attention, it just goes in your head, yeah. you know, it just like goes right in and you don't realize how it's affecting. So, you know, those, those really subtle changes we make in the inside of a book between, you know, a sci-fi book or a fantasy book or a book that's, you know, meant to be an Ill a collector's edition illustrated book. Like, you know, the margins are bigger in the last wish illustrated than they are in the last wish trade paperback because oh. it gives it more of a gravity on the page. Uh. The book is also physically bigger, but, you know, you <laughs> give it more gravity. We look at the line spacing between the lines very closely, the drop caps, things like that. And, and, you know, casual readers are not supposed to notice that stuff. We don't expect them to, but a lot of mm. a lot of work does go into it for sure. But you know, the sprayed edges get all the glory, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> look, they just look so good, okay? <laughs> I get it. I get it. I walked into a bookstore. I was just in San Francisco and I walked into Borderlands bookshop and this these sprayed edges just scream at you from across the store. I get exactly. it. I love sprayed edges. <laughs> It is great, but we can't do it on every book. There's literally <laughs> not time to spray. Even if we, I mean, it's also expensive because you're literally spraying, you know, it's a, yeah, it's a yeah. very intensive process, but um, there's also not enough time because only so many publishers can spray so many books at a time because there's only so many people spraying book edges. <laughs> <laughs> like, so that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, really, that's what it's like. So, um, you know, People, people have looked at, you know, there's a special edition of the um, Justice of Kings that has sprayed edges in the oh. UK. I was like, do yeah, you yeah, know that... how many fewer books the UK prints than the US prints? Teeny country, big country. <laughs> like that goes into effect. Like how many books you're printing really does go into effect. And that's why, you know, like the subscription boxes sometimes can get away or the limited editions can get away with, with doing a lot of effects because it's only on a little bit of books. Like we're printing like 10,000 oh, okay. copies and they're printing like 100, 200, 300 copies. I'm like, yeah, they oh, could get yeah. away with it because somebody's just spraying them. <laughs> <laughs> you know? We don't have time. <laughs> yeah, you so, cannot do that for thousands and hundreds of thousands of books. <laughs> yeah, I will say I have never gotten to do a stencil on a sprayed edge yet. You know how sometimes oh. they have signs in them? Oh, um, I have this one, I, I think. Hold on. I'm dying one. to. Can you do that for sort of destiny? <laughs> Something like this. No, because it has to match. Yeah, exactly. I yeah. haven't gotten to do that yet. I haven't it's gotten to do that yet. It's very work intensive. So we'll see. Um, but um, no, because you want, so no, I can't spray the edges on Sword of Destiny because everybody would yell at me because it wouldn't oh. match. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> the, other thing, the other thing we have a lot of conversation about is some people, you know, a deckled edge. Oh uh, yeah, um, yeah. So whether is... for your, so this is flat edges and this has yeah. deckled edges. Ah uh, um, yeah, yeah. Whether a book has deckled edges or not, because some people feel very strongly they love a deckled edge. Some people hate a deckled edge. So it's like, mm. are we going to do a deckled edge or not? You know. So we didn't do it on The Witcher, on purpose. You know. But so we won't do it on Sword of Destiny. Obviously, we won't match. We have to match this. So. Oh, but it is also a nice, a nice touch to do this uh, on the, ta-da, this is a nice touch. <laughs> I know, I like that. Yeah. You know, I didn't know, um, like I said, I gave uh, the UK all my files and it's yeah. funny, I didn't, I, the, the weather, the spine, our, the US spine is red on the book and it's, it's not red. No, on, on the inside. Oh, on the inside, this one? Yeah, so the so that's my version. I did the red on red foil and the, uh -huh. the Glang's version is all black. You showed it in your video. So the yeah. actual hardcover of Glang's is all black. And and I don't know if they did that on purpose or if we just didn't communicate well. Oh, oh really? <laughs> well, then they have to keep doing that for their edition and we have to keep doing what we did for our edition. So sometimes, I'm not, I'm not sure. Maybe it was their choice. I have to talk to their art director, but. You know, it's little things that, like, I didn't know until I watched your video. Oh my like, gosh! <laughs> there is there's a diff there is a difference there. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's cool to have 
little Easter eggs like that, little differences. But again, going forward, they will they will have to match that edition, and we will match ours and make sure that you know we don't piss. Yeah, especially I illustrated and special editions. Like you want to keep them very. Yeah, readers are more critical towards those editions. <laughs> no, also I understand they're spending more money for sure. Yeah. Um, but also you're you're getting that that book not just as a book but as a as a art object yeah definitely that's that's that at least that's how i treat the book <laughs> yeah, yeah. i know yeah. if i could for special editions like the thing that kills me is when people get special editions in the mail and like the shipping has screwed it screwed it oh, up oh my god yeah, those know, like, are the worst <laughs> I, wish, I know i wish i could like wrap each one in bubble wrap but like i don't yeah. have control of amazon yeah amazon, ever and like but um you know <clears throat> so that hurts me too sometimes but also like it's sad <clears throat> sometimes i see people leaving reviews for authors they're like this book came screwed up in the mail one star i'm like it's oh, not the author's fault <laughs> <laughs> i hate it i hate when i see reviews like that <laughs> I know I feel bad. People don't realize how important those, um, I think they don't think about, you know, a, an author at home, like in their pajamas, reading reviews and seeing yeah. it. They don't think about it being like a real person on the other side, you know, reading their review. They're like, I couldn't do anything about it, you know? <laughs> We're like, we know, it's okay. Your book is great. The five stars will drown it out, you know? <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it's just ridiculous. I mean, you wrote, you have worked so hard for your book and then you get the one star over something that's oh, yeah, going to no, like this. Oh, yeah, no, be upset. Yeah. I get it. You know, return yeah, yeah. that book. Get a better copy. I get it. But, um, <laughs> you know, but it's not the author, certainly. It's not even Yeah, us. yeah. <laughs> I have a very thick skin for for hate tweets, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We all have to build, uh, well, a thick skin for this. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you don't always get nice comments on your youtube channel either yeah no <laughs> no <laughs> but i think that i think that's what it is i think people don't think about there being a human being on the other side reading that you know mm. and it and it's so wonderful <clears throat> working in genre that people feel so passionately about yeah, yeah yeah you know not that people in mainstream books or contemporary fiction don't like covers they do but the, it's not the same like like drama, passion, you know, <laughs> lust sometimes, you know, and I really appreciate that. It makes it so much fun to, to do things for, you know, because when you've worked really hard on something and it's received so well and everybody loves it and it's exciting, you know, that feels so great for me. You know, like people and designers who work in contemporary fiction um, never get that, you know, mm. you never get that kind of feedback from, from a mainstream audience, you know, like a, just a contemporary fiction audience, you know, or a nonfiction audience. Um, but but you you get that direct love or hate you know in sci-fi fantasy <laughs> so <laughs> it's both good and bad from this <laughs> it's both good and bad for sure yeah well I think that's it for today's conversation it has been well very enlightening and really fun to chat with you Lauren <laughs> seriously good good no it's been a, it's been a pleasure and like I said I love I love telling the behind the scenes stuff because I think it really helps fans. Um, <clears throat> understand why we're making the decisions we're making and also it's good for them to see that there are fans on the other side too who feel mm -hmm. you know just as strongly as they do about these books and and want to put the best book possible in their hands so well it definitely has helped open my mind as well <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah well anytime yeah. anytime you have questions about something you know how to find me yeah okay well that's it for today's conversation seriously thank you so much once again for visiting this channel and yeah, if you don't know Lauren, I highly suggest you, for you to check out her portfolio and everything that she worked on. It is amazing. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.